Welcome everyone to starting your consulting business with a graduate degree. My name is Ebony and um, today I will be hosting the webinar. So proactively defining your niche um, with your consultancy, setting your rates and expanding your network will set your business up for success. And um, becoming a consultant brings on a whole array of benefits. I am a consultant. I own um, a business that's called Keen Lion Consulting. And one of the benefits that I really love is the flexibility and determining when I work, where I work, the rates in which I charge. Um, there is a minimum of overhead to starting your consulting business. And it is really easy to scale up um, to accommodate your lifestyle and also financials. And despite the disadvantages, there are an important factors to consider in giving your consultancy the best step in success. Um, powering your undergraduate degree with a master's degree can help you jumpstart your, your consultant business. Um, becoming an expert in an area and then trying to choose a specialization um, has never been more possible today because of technology. So. How do you start your consulting business? Um, we will definitely go through that. So stay tuned. Establishing credibility with a graduate degree. It is very important. I also have a graduate degree. Um, so let's look at the definition of a consultant. The dictionary defines consultant as an expert in a particular field who works as an advisor either to a company or an individual. And, you know, I know that sounds pretty vague. <laughs> it doesn't give much explanation, but if you have been under a rock or anywhere else in the past decade, you probably already do have a good idea of what a consultant is. Um, and if you decided to make up your mind today to start your own consultant business, but, you don't know how and you're interested in getting a graduate degree to help establish your credibility. Now the credibility paradox is indeed a core dilemma among many professionals as they enter into the consulting business. To be successful, a consultant needs to be seen as a credible source um, before they have the opportunity to build a name for their services. It puts a new spin on the idea of hitting the ground running. Without the credibility paradox, there's no ground to run on. You need to have already covered the ground before you have started. Now, you should ask yourself these questions. Why should I pay this much for a graduate degree? And your response, response is your qualifications, such as your degree and certifications and previous work experience. Um, whenever you become a consultant, that's when you can, that's when you can request those type of rates because of your credibility. Um, I, I have a friend, her name is uh, Melinda, it's an independent consultant in Arlington. And um, she thinks more people are getting into the consulting field because technology has made it easier to do so. The same technology that has helped her to be successful as a consultant has made it easier for others to do the same. So there comes that differentiation factor. What separates a good consultant from a bad consultant is passion and drive for excellence. And yeah, a good consultant should be knowledgeable about the subject he or she is consulting in. And that makes a huge difference. Um, it is no brainer that a master's degree is important to establishing credibility and drive success. For many professionals, getting a graduate degree seems like the next logical step to advancing their career. The benefits are equitable regardless of your industry or area or professional focus. However, some individuals may wonder if it's worth it to pursue a master's degree to get started and grow their consulting business. Having experience, you know, it may seem like it is enough 
given the commitment and expense involved. Now, for those who plan to work in a managerial capacity or who have entrepreneurial aspirations, a master's, it can help you build the leadership skills required to succeed in the areas in the arena of consultancy. Now, the thing that you may be considering is, is consulting right for me? Um, fun fact, more than 53 million Americans, over 34% of the U.S. workforce are currently doing independent freelance style work. Forbes estimate this number will increase over 50% over the coming years. Um, for many of the individuals, it's because of necessity. You know, um, full-time jobs are disintegrating and high paying jobs are getting harder, harder to find. And especially in the current climate that we're in, a lot of people are looking to do gig jobs. Um, you know, but there's a silver lining. The gig economy is bigger than it's ever been. And as business employees, fewer and fewer full-time employees, there are dependent more and more on independent contractors and consultants to fill in all these gaps. And on top of this, consulting is more lucrative than it's ever been. Now, according to Forbes, the consulting industry is worth a whopping $1 billion per year. And it's predicted to grow over 80% per year over the next couple of years. Now, here are some questions you need to ask yourself before starting a consulting business, including how to define your niche, set your rates, and grow your client base because that's important for you to make money. Let's grow the customer base. So the first question you wanna ask yourself is, what certifications and special licensing will I need? Now that depends upon your profession. You may need special certification or special licensing before you can begin operating as a consultant besides your bachelor's or your graduate degree. For example, if you are um, doing fundraising consulting, um, it doesn't necessarily need a specialization or a certification, although you can become certified through the National Society of Fundraising Executives. And in some states, you may need to register as a professional fundraiser consultant before starting your business. So keep in mind that and make sure that you're following the rules within your states. The next question that you may be asking yourself is, am I qualified to be a consultant? Now, before you hang out your shingles and hope that clients begin beating your door down to hire you, make sure you have the qualifications necessary to get the job done. Now, if you wanna be a computer consultant, for example, make sure you are up to date in the knowledge department with all the trends and changes in the computer industry because it changed every other day. Now, the next question you may want to ask yourself is, am I organized to be a consultant? Do you like planning your day? You might want to ask yourself, am I an expert when it comes down to time management? You should have answered yes to those questions. Um, it is really, really important and imperative to be organized. The next question. Do you like to network? Networking is critical to the success of any type of consultant today. Being able to build up your network of contacts immediately is imperative. The last question, have I set long-term and short-term goals? And do they allow for me to become a consultant? Now, if your goals do not match up with the time and energy it takes to open a successful consulting business, then reconsider before making your move in this direction, because it does take time and effort. Now, completing a master's degree demonstrates a, a very compelling learning environment to where you want to continue to learn and improve and applying your skills um, that can help your company succeed. Additionally, professionals with a graduate degree feel a greater sense of confidence in their marketability, as well as the wealth of information they could bring to various vendors and put in, in endeavors. These are just a few of the advantage of getting a graduate degree. Now, collecting details as you plan 
Now, we believe that consulting business is unquestionably the best type of business you can launch. You know, I, I can be kind of um, biased, but that is true. Um, but why? What is a consulting business and what makes consulting so lucrative? There are a lot of misconceptions about consulting. People often think that to be a consultant, you need special credentials, a fancy office, a polished suit, and um, professional consulting business plans. I think that you need to have a staff and the ability to make in-person appointments with big businesses. Sometimes they think that the consulting business is only for um, enterprise businesses, such like supply chain, um, operational management, IT, HR, and other really formal, stale business things. But none of this is true. In other words, to build a consultant business, all you really need to do is focus on helping a specific group of people solve the problems they're facing. So let's get started with a few questions. Um, the first thing that you wanna ask yourself is, what's my specialty? Typically the best consultants are established experts in their field. People who demonstrate experience across lengthy careers are notable success in a certain area. Before starting a consulting business, it's imperative to evaluate the way your experience appeal to your potential clients. Asking yourself questions like, what are the strongest selling points that you have? How does your experience differentiate from your competition? The aim should be to carve out a niche within your consultant market, showing how your history, both professional and also personal, translate into a unique perspective that's a value for your clients. Um, the next question that you wanna ask yourself is do you need special training? While you might be an expert in your field, consulting requires additional skills that can be honed with extra training. As a consultant, you might be called upon to speak publicly, train groups of people, identify problems in struggling teams, analyze and present data and offer feedback effectively. Um, I have another friend, he is, his name is Hussein, he's a CEO and founder of WeWork, um, and one day he told me that uh, he had a lot of hesitation with launching a business um, because he did not, it, it didn't make any marketing sense and he did not have the experience. He told me that um, he needed the sales, accounting and other skills that were outside of his expertise. And he was really daunted by that at first. Now, your ability to perform these tasks will likely become a determining factor in your success as a consultant. And that is going to be regardless of your specialty. And of course, in public speaking, reporting and management can go a long way in improving client relations and outcome, which all will be taught in your master's degree program. There are also business considerations in running your own consulting um, business. For example, writing a business plan, handling financials, and structure, structuring and scaling operations. It's helpful to upscale and to upskill in these areas and properly, pro properly, excuse me, understand the legal and tax requirements that comes with working for yourself. Now, the last question with regards to collecting the details as you plan is, what industries hire consultants? The industries that most commonly hire consultants include financial, technology, human resources, marketing, and business management. Now, regardless of your line of work, however, consulting is a viable way to find employment. If you can identify the ways other companies or professionals might benefit from your expertise, you are on the right path. Now, figuring out the logistics. I know you're probably like, how does this all fall together? Now, understanding logistics, um, the portion of running a business is important from the finance to the structure. Where should you start? Um, 
Now you might be thinking, so how should I charge for consulting work? Now, as a consultant, your price point will be a major factor in your ability to attract and retain clients. If your rates are too high, potential clients might be turned off. And if you set your rates too low, your potential clients might become suspicious and question your legitimacy. It's always a good idea to audit your competition to gain an understanding of their services that they offer and the rates. Ideally, keep your prices within a similar range to your competitors and find a way to differentiate yourselves from their offerings. Now, typically there are three ways consultants charge for their work. The first way is hourly. Now this is a flat rate that establishes as a reflection of your expertise and clients pay only for the time you spend on their account. Now it is essential, it is essential to track your hours using this approach because a client will likely have questions if the task you're working on takes much longer than initially pro um, promised. Or you can do the other kind of rate, which is a project rate. Now this rate, clients are charged according to the work that's completed on project by project basis. While this transparency is often attractive to clients, it doesn't afford you the flexibility when contingencies arise and projects may take longer than expected, okay? Um, there's also the retainer. Now, this pay schedule is ideal when you're providing an ongoing service to a client. For example, managing their website or handling their bookkeeping. It means you are paid at a recurring rate for an extended period of time at a recurring rate um, that will be very, very beneficial. And the reason why a lot of companies like this is because as an independent contractor, the company don't have to worry about paying for um, contributions to taxes, benefits, or other funds. Now, extra tip, introductory offers or add-ons with certain packages are very popular to strategizing for attracting your clients. Now, while rewarding longevity is key in keeping your clients book robust and ongoing, make sure that your offers are very, very competitive. Now, the other question to ask is how do I structure, structure my service? The same way you must establish fair and consistent price points for your services, you should structure your service in the same way that's clear to your clients and easy for you to adhere to, no matter how tied up in a project you become. Scope can see you executing on a strategy with only promise the planning or tracking the project performance when you were only paid for its delivery. Be as specific as possible in explaining the scope of your service and the costs involved in blustering this work with support and add-ons. Now, extra tip about that, it is important to know when to say no to a job that is not right. As a consultant, your reputation and your record of success are integral to the health of your business. It's a good idea to evaluate the potential risk of every client and every project. If you're out of your depth, or if your client has unrealistic expectations, it's sometimes best to turn down the project. Now, what registrations and licenses do you need? Um, now, of course, all that depends on the state in which that you are registered in. Um, Depending on the vision and the extent you wish to grow your practice, you can either run your um, consultancy under your personal name and or a fictitious business name like mine. I, I have one, it's called King Lion. Um, if you're running operations under your own name, it's likely you'll start as a sole proprietor. This business structure requires no registration with the federal government and it's the most easiest way to establish a business. But the drawback, all the income and losses must be filed in your own personal tax returns. Alternatively, establishing an LLC 
in which your company is taxed as a separate entity and your personal assets are not at risk. Now, for more information on the difference license and registering required um, to start your business, um, always check for your within your state. Now, what about contracts? A contract is a legal binding agreement between you as a consultant and your clients. It should specify the work, really specify the work you've agreed to complete, as well as the amount your client has agreed to pay. Though contracts requirements will vary between state to state, as contract laws are bound by the state, all contracts should have the following, should have a specific title, identify the parties involved using their full names of the individual and the contact information and tax identification numbers of the company. The contract should also detail the purpose of the contract and what each party must provide to fulfill the contract. It should also define the type and scope of services involved, include the amount owed for those services and when and how this amount should be payable. It should establish the length of the agreement and include a start and end date. Um, your contract should include a provision on the termination of the contract by each party, and it should ensure the contract is agreed by both party and signed by both parties. Now here is the, the most important thing. Let's talk about getting clients. Um, in building a consultant business, word of mouth is one of the most powerful ways to attract and retain clients. If customers share their positive experiences, uh oh, I think I went to, there we go. Now, if customers share their positive experience with others, it's a surefire way to grow your customer base. The opposite, however, is also true. If someone has a negative experience, they're likely to inform others in their network and your reputation will be tarnished. An effective way to encourage people to share a positive experience is to provide incentives to do so. For example, if an existing client successfully refers a new client to you, you might reward them with a compensation fee or a gift pack. Networking is also important and attending industry events, potentially hosting your own event, is an effective way to foregoing new connection and pitch new clients. Participating in online communities, speaking at relevant com um, conferences and sharing advice on social media can go far in establishing your expertise. Plus conducting outreach on social media like platforms like LinkedIn or capturing the emails of people visiting your website can help you scale and create an effective self funnel with qualified leads. Now, another way to get clients is connecting with your instructor and other students in your cohort. Your graduate program instructors can come with a lot of different professional backgrounds, bringing with them their experience and their own professional network. Ask to connect with them on LinkedIn and to stay in contact beyond your program. Same with the other students within your program. They can potentially connect you to their network. Now, here goes another extra tip. Um, design a buyer journey will help you better understand the needs and the mindset of your potential clients. Identifying your target audience their various pain points and their unique customer journey will ensure that your approach and the prospects will be considered with empathy and solutions that are relevant to their problems. Now, the characteristics of a great consultant, everything that Ebony is, no, I'm just messing. <laughs> Um, the characteristics of a great consultant. Now, as a college graduate, now, the, the, the college graduation season is approaching, um, and there are tons of recent graduates entering into the job market um, who are unsure of their career path. Uh, with the various job opportunities that are offered day by day and responsibilities and projects, um, attractive salaries, 
and there are a wealth of opportunities for these new graduates. Now, a career in consulting can certainly be appealing. However, no matter what type of consultant or which area you decide to go in, a person will need to have a certain level and a great list of um, characteristics. Now, having self-confidence, being a good listener, being a team player, easily cultivating and gaining clients' trust, exhibiting humility, um, having a good communication skills, and being able to showcase expertise. Uh, now, what does it mean to have self-confidence? Now, when, when you're meeting new clients, be sure to not show or sound uncertain in the response to their questions. You need to speak with authority, um, specifically when they are discussing their sensitive matter. You know, present yourself as confidently as possible and avoid sounding unclear or unsure in your response. Um, what it means to exhibit humility, it is not thinking of you are better than any other people. Do not be boastful or arrogant when working with your stakeholders. Remember that individuals you are working with may have been doing the job you are now tasked to remedy, to improve. Always keep in mind the client is the star of the equation and your only job is to make sure as their consultant that your client shines. You should also be a good listener. Now, listening to what the client is stating when they're expressing their needs and their problems is most helpful way to ensure you're going to be able to solve their problem as easily and quickly as possible. Do not assume you know everything about their challenges or business, even after doing research, or if you had tackled the same problem before. And in additionally, to be a good listener, ask relevant, open-ended questions. This allows the client to realize you are listening to them and that you understand their current situation. You also need to be a good team player. Now develop a sense of collaborative relationship with your peers and clients is imperative to being a great consultant. Working well with others not only strengthen your skills, but it also can allow for growth of your consultancy. Have a good communication skill. Communication skills are both orally and written. The ability to be a good speaker is just as important as having the ability to write clear, concise emails and presentations. Since consultants are often viewed as subject matter experts, the ability to deliver a message either written or aloud is critical to being a successful consultant. You also need to be able to showcase expert knowledge. Now, again, the idea of a subject matter expert or SME arise. Your client has hired you or your firm because they expect you to have more expertise than their company's internal team or because they do not have the bandwidth or resources or time to solve the problem at hand. In all interactions with your client, ensure to exhibit the knowledge you have for this particular area of expertise. Continuous education is also imperative to remain competitive and at the top of your game. You should always be reading articles, blogs, white paper, papers, et cetera, and networking with other industry professionals to ensure and maintain the knowledge that is expected from the client. And, and additionally, a client um, will expect the consultants to be able to take a solution from theory to realization and show their clients how to complete it and maintain that solution within their environment. Um, and a consultant should have a great a characteristic of easily cultivating and gaining client trust. Now, all these skills ultimately lead to this final characteristics of gaining your client's trust. 
Your engagement will not be successful if the client does not feel a sense of trust from you as the consultant. Now, the ability to calm the concerns and show value for the money being paid by the client is imperative to the success of the engagement and the ability to earn future business from this client or by their recommendations to their network. If consulting is an area that you are interested in, keep in mind, <laughs> no matter the discipline, it is people driven, people driven and having developing key characteristics you can have a long time. So now we're going to take out the opportunity to quiz ourselves. Let me go back. You guys already saw the questions. Now, how can you expand your network? Anybody have the answer to that? I do. Use social media and attend networking events and connect with their cohorts. Self-confidence, it is important. How do you charge? See, that went way too fast. Let's go back. How do you charge for your consulting rates? hourly by project and retainer. And do you feel like you're ready to start your consulting career? Hopefully after this, everybody says a resounding yes. Now, some key takeaways. Now, once you begin to understand something, you often discover that it's much more simpler than you expected. This is especially true when it comes down to the consulting industry. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you do not have to actually have any special credentials, a fancy office, a polished suit, or a professional consulting business plan. So what do you need? The truth is that you only need four things to start your consulting business and quickly grow to it to a six-figure income and beyond. You will need a compelling um, offer that provides value, a compelling offer that provides value, a well-populated niche of potential clients. Remember, your riches are in the niches. Credibility, you would need to have a sense of credibility and a reputable system for attracting clients. You will also need a wired mentality. The sense of grit will be your very best friend. Now, as a final note, how you communicate the value you bring is very important. I ask consultants what they do all the time, and they often give a very, very, very vague answer like, well, I help people with their business. You know, that is not, it's not good enough. For example, you can say, I help women who suffer from binge eating to become free of binge eating by the end of their six week journey with me. Or you could say, I help plumbers get hot water cylinder repair clients by using Google AdWords. You can also be as specific as saying, I help local businesses double their monthly clients with six months using local SELs. Now the whole point of choosing a niche is solving the problem is that you have a specific value proposition to offer. So make sure you always communicate your value proposition as specifically as possible. Now in a graduate program, you gain the knowledge and credibility and expertise to become a consultant and to start your consulting business. Now, any questions? I would like to thank our speaker today for this very informative uh, presentation and uh, very important information. As you said in our uh, time now, being a consultant could be better than being a full-time employee. Um, so if you have any questions for our speaker regarding the uh, webinar on consulting or any of that, please, feel free to unmute and ask your question directly or type it in the chat box and I'll be happy to forward your question to her. Um, so this is your chance to ask any of the unanswered questions you have. Um, so as you think of your questions, if we can go to the next slide. Um, 
So uh, also remember to connect with us on social media. We are on every platform, we have Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. This webinar will be shared on our social media accounts uh, within a week or two, in case you wanna rewatch it, share it with friends and family. So you can do that. Um, the recording of this webinar will be shared within a week or two on our account. So feel free to connect with us. And uh, for those who are interested and um, in our uh, graduate degree programs, the fall term application submission deadline is approaching on uh, September 3rd. So uh, submit your application before the deadline approaches. And if you have any more questions about the programs, feel free to email us. Uh, or reach out to us on social media. You can do that as well. Uh, do we have a question? I see someone, Eric, unmuted. If you like Hello. To... Yes. Uh, sorry, um, I would like to ask one question. Mm -hmm. So um, what I would like to know is uh, if you start um, the consultant business, um, how much are you likely to make uh, per month, like as a startup business, something like that? How much? Or it, or, or, or it depends on the experience or, or like the customer base that you'll be able to get. It really depends on um, the consultant, how they structure their prices. Mm -hmm. And um, remember, I was telling you about that grit because yes. you will also be in charge of growing your business. So yes, it depends yes. on your um, the foundation in which you built your business, mm -hmm. your price point, yes. and keep in mind to always leverage, 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 re leverage, um, get help, um, hire a virtual assistant, because if you're too busy trying to do um, clerical or administration tasks, that's going to take you away from growing your business. Networking yes. is really important. Um, and being consistent with that and with your pipeline of um, your leads and prospects. But also remember your niche. Stay yes. as narrow as possible within your niche. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Uh, You're welcome, my question, Eric. <laughs> my question has been answered. Um, one last question that I would like to ask, but uh, specifically to the university. Um, I have about 136 US college credits right now. And uh, I wanted to pursue my, um, my MBA at, mm -hmm. uh, at the university, AVU. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if I'll be eligible to, uh, to apply because I haven't, uh, I haven't been awarded my bachelor's degree yet, but I'm highly likely to get it by next year, like mm -hmm. maybe somewhere around May. So I don't know how you can help me. And I, also, I would also like to know if you have some scholarships for international students, because um, so far it's, it has been difficult for me to find a job because oh. I still don't have a bachelor's degree. And most companies that I've approached seeking for job they they are requiring i mean they're requiring a bachelor's degree as a minimum requirement right so for eligibility you do have to have your bachelor's degree to apply for a master's degree uh, but mm -hmm. once you are done with the program you can apply if uh, if not this year next year and uh, you can submit your application and our admissions will go through your application. And if you have any further questions about admissions, you can also reach out to our um, admissions. You can find the contact information on our website at AmericanVisionUniversity.org. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the first thing you need to do is finish your bachelor's degree. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Do we have any more questions? Um, I think I see a need. He has his hand up. Um, so uh, there's one question. Do you recommend starting 
your consulting business alone or should you join in with a partner? Um, no, I do not recommend starting with a partner. <laughs> I would say do it alone and um, whomever you have the idea of a partner, then um, maybe you all can help each other out uh, within your own individual entity, uh, refer business back and forth. But keep in mind that with your partnership, if you decide to go into a partnership, you know, there's going to be two heads and the old saying two heads are better than one is mm -hmm. not always the case with business. I see. Thank you. Um, do you have a question for our speaker? Uh, you can unmute now and ask your question. Or you can also type it in the uh, chat box. Eric, do you have more questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, can I ask one last question? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talking about the partnerships, like if you decide to like partner with some somebody else um, in the business for, because I think um, <clears throat> for different businesses, they should have, they should encounter different problems as in like being in a partnership. So I think I, I, I would like to know if you can think of any possible like uh, uh, problems that one can encounter if you decide to partner with someone. Yeah, any type of disagreement. Um, yes. it, it could be simple, something as <laughs> I've seen business partnerships um, become strained over a business luncheon because of a certain food that was served. Um, you know, if you're in a partnership, when it comes down to the financials, you have two people that has to approve something before it goes in or out of your the bank account. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's like any type of relationship. Once that partner is yours, that's your, the legal partner of that that entity. So um, it was just just make sure that that relationship can stand the test of time, as well as that business with that relationship because a partnership you're not the only one making the decisions it's yes, good to have yeah. the extra support financially and with the resources but sometimes yes. is it worth having to come to the meeting of minds all yes. the time with a partner yeah um because sometimes yeah you, you do need uh, a partner in some kind of business because you might find that um there are some areas that you're not good at and your partner is good at on those areas and he can really help uh in making sure that the business survives and uh, it becomes more profitable you know Definitely. so yeah it might be good but it's um, sometimes it's not good because sometimes you have these disagreements so mm -hmm then yeah um thank you yeah um so one more question um can you grow your uh business uh, your consulting business globally and uh, say that one more can, time can you grow your consulting business globally as, uh, yes your um, US and Mm -hmm. I have um, international clients. The challenge is, is that exchange rate <laughs> whenever it comes down to um, payment, sometimes the exchange rate could be a challenge. Um, other than that, because technology has allowed us to reach so many people at such instantaneously, um, you can, and it's, it's really, really possible. And really quickly. It's just um, making sure that you understand the cultural differences. Um, and again, expect that change, that exchange rate to uh, have a solution for your clients for the exchange rate, because I've, I've had to face that a couple of times. Awesome. Uh, do we have more questions? Um, about the 
the global clients um have you encountered any like uh maybe some issues or maybe some some circumstances, circumstances whereby um you tried to give them um um maybe some principle or some approach to a particular way of doing business or something but um it didn't work as you have like uh uh maybe how can i put this um just because of the of the differences you see like uh because you are in the usa right now right so like mm -hmm. you're trying to help someone you're trying to help somebody's business who's outside usa probably their working environment it's different or it's different from definitely it's different it should be different so are you talking about culturally or are you talking about the time zone i'm talking about cultural say that again um the, like the challenges like cultural yeah. challenges yeah. you have to overcome like yeah you're talking about culturally mm -hmm. yes okay yeah so no um thankfully i have not um generally i try to make sure that i do my due diligence in ensuring that i understand the culture and the differences with the client before um, we go into a partnership because that's, that's what I call the relationship that me and my clients have. We have a partnership. Oh, okay. um, and so before we establish that partnership, I make sure that th they understand me and have very well vetted out me and my um, business. And likewise, you know, I stated before that, you know, there are certain clients that you just say no and that you don't take on. Um, and you will have to really um, use your, you have to be very discerning in that um, because not every partnership, like we were saying before, <laughs> works well together. Um, but so far I've been blessed enough to where all my clients, we've worked well together regardless of where they're from. Now the only challenge sometimes is the time zone um, that could pose a problem, but as a consultant, and especially with you running your business, sometimes you will have to be flexible and you know meet the client where they're at. If it's eight o'clock their time, but it's ten o'clock your time, the PM, um, you know you get up late and you meet your client. Mm. So basically, to avoid any 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 issues, you have to first um, do like some some digging into their culture and how they operate before like uh getting them mm -hmm. to be part of yeah, your so time. Like, uh, definitely i have a discovery call so before anything is formal we do a discovery call and we get to know each other beforehand um i also research their business um the area in which they are in um just to make sure that i am respectful of them because whatever is seem respectful and okay here in the states may not be over there Yes. Um, thank you so much for today. And uh, you're really good. And um, I really learned something um, a oh, lot. Eric, I appreciate yeah. you. And, and I hope it's gonna, it's going to help me like down the line, you know, in my life, I think. As you I, know, it will. You and I are going to be working on a project together one day. I'm very sure. Very sure. <laughs> very happy. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Eric, for the questions. Um, so speaking of the discovery call or the kickoff call, when you're having that first um, call with the client, do you provide them with any documents or anything? Do you send them over an agenda or um, how do you prepare for it? Um, no, for the initial discovery call, I, I don't, I try to make it as easy and as um, with no, I, I, I of course have an agenda, <laughs> but um, I don't want them to feel like there is an agenda. It's really a getting to know them, mm -hmm. um, them getting to know me, me understanding um, their problems, me seeing if there is solution that I may be able to offer this client um, I'm not going to offer it on the discovery call, but it's my job to see if if this is a good fit because I may not be, but it may be over 
my dad, I am not a computer consultant, computer science consultant at all. I will mess someone up. So they can want to do, they could schedule a call with me, um, but it's my job to uncover what they, their needs are. So I can either help them or not. And for us to do that without having an agenda generally helps better because they're able to speak freely and I'm able to get exactly out of them what I need um, to see if I can help them. And if it's the right fit, because I can help them and it might not be a right fit. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so going back to the contract, uh, so who is responsible to send uh, the contract? Is it the consultant or the client or both? The consultant, the consultant. consultant. Remember whoever sends the, the, the contract out, is the person who has the upper hand. So the client can send a contract, but it's always best for the consultant to do that because you own the, um, you set the tone for the, um, for the ongoing relationship. But before you send out the contract, you wanna make sure that you send out a proposal. You're gonna always propose your scope of work. Um, and like I stated earlier, you want it to be very, very specific um, because your client will expect for you to do things that are outside of what you propose and what's in the contract. Um, so the proposal shows your scope of work, your timeline um, and your price. They agree to the proposal and then you send out the contract and that's where you make things official. Great. Um... Do we have any last questions? Um, I think there's one more question. So after okay. you graduate from your, um, your master's program, What's the first step you take after graduation? How do you begin the journey or how do you decide? Like, yeah. the big question that that is experience? a good question. Yeah, I would, I would really encourage you to uh, figure out what your area of expertise is. Um, because the more broader your service is, the harder it will be for you to land your clients. Um, so understanding who or what, um, you plan to serve, um, is really, really important. Um, and reading, 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 stay up on the industry, um, find books about consulting and the area of expertise that you plan to be in. And um, running a, starting a consulting business is probably the easiest in regards to startup costs. It is um, any type of business to start. Um, the only other thing that I would suggest is after graduation, after you figure out your expertise, then um, get involved with networking. As long as you're out there networking and you're meeting businesses, um, you have that pipeline to where you can pull from to get your first client. And um, that is a really good boost of confidence for you to feel like, oh, I have an official business. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we have time for more questions. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. And uh, thank you to our guest speaker for your time, uh, for responding to questions and for everything. It was a wonderful webinar. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed it and found it as beneficial as I personally did. Uh, again, please connect with us on social media. And uh, if you have any questions about programs or certificates or anything, uh, email us at the info at AmericanVisionUniversity.org. You can find the email on our website and social media accounts. 
Uh, you will also find the recording of this webinar, today's webinar, on our social media accounts also within a week or two. So please connect and reach out. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, Ebony, for everything. Kaiser, welcome. See you all later. See you later.